Okay, so as we read example two, it says the world's tallest freestanding totem pole is located at Beacon Hill Park in Victoria, BC. It was carved from a single cedar log by noted chief, uh, noted carver chief Mungo Martin of the, oh boy, Quakutal. Uh, Qua 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 yeah, sorry, not very good at pronouncing that. With a team that included his son David and Henry Hunt. It was erected in 1956. While visiting the park, Manuel wanted to determine the height of the totem pole, so he drew a sketch and made some measurements. Okay, so there's a picture of the actual totem pole there. It's pretty impressive. Pretty tall. Still standing. Amazing. Okay, so here's the, here's the diagram that uh, you guys have just quickly sketched here. It's a totem pole. Now, obviously, the ground is not a level ground, so we don't have a 90-degree angle here, okay? Um, so that's going to be part of our issue. Uh, we could find, uh, we could find, if it was a right triangle, this would be a pretty straightforward maybe problem, but we're going to have to do sort of some, some intermediate stuff, right? Why don't we just go nine and five? Yeah, if you know this is five, okay, so you're saying, okay, well, there's, th there's different ways you could start with this, and you could label lots of parts, so let's just get to that. So here's the, here's my diagram, I drew that pretty well, didn't I? Okay, so if we, uh, <coughs> so this is five right here. And this is 40, okay? So you're saying that we could actually label this right here as 85, I guess. Is that what you're saying? Okay, very good. So we've got this is 85. Um, we don't know this angle or this angle yet. So again, we're trying to find the height. So can we find these pieces or, you know, what, what do we want to find first? Well you could find this little angle right here which would then give us this angle because they, they would be supplementary so we could do that too so we get let's leave that 85 there and um, let's solve for for this angle right here so I know that I have 180 and if I subtract this 40 degree angle right here a and I subtract 5 then I'm going to get uh, this angle up at the top here so what is that? 180 minus 45 would be 135. Okay, good. So this is 135, and this angle right here would be supplementary to it. So what's 180 minus 35? That's going to be, I guess right there, okay, 45? 45? Uh, one, wait, one, sorry, there it is, 135. So this is 45. Everyone see that? No. So angles of a triangle, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit messy there. Okay, so let me just erase a few things and do that again. So this right here, this angle here, can you see that? That is 135. Because this is 40, this is 5, and so the leftover is 135. Okay, see that? Now this is a straight, uh, a straight angle right here. So you have 135 here, and then you have would have 45 there. Okay, is that a little bit more clear? Okay, so what else do we need? Do we need anything else in order to find H? Can I find H right now? Uh, hey, do you know what I see? I see, uh, I don't know, I don't really see this. I guess. Uh, do we have a, p a pair of angle si opposite side to use sine law? Can we do that yet? 45, don't have H. 85, don't have this one. Have 42, but don't have this one. Okay. Do, can I get this angle? No? Yeah. So 180 minus 85 uh, minus 45, right? Does that look good? So what's that? That's 130, that's 50. Yeah, thank you. So this is 50 degrees. Okay, so I'm getting somewhere now. So now, now can I use the sine law? Because I'm like yeah. really itching to use the sine law here. I don't know why. Okay, so this 42 should be right here, right? Okay, so th I have a pair. So I, I have 42 over sine 50. And then H is going to be opposite of this 45 here. So I do H over sine 45. Does that look right? You guys okay with that? So you don't have to use the cosine law. If you can use the sine <laughs> law, that's great. Sine law is maybe a bit easier. It's a bit fewer calculations, I suppose. So 
So H would be 42 sine 45 over sine 50. So if you punch that in, does that come up to about 38.768? Okay. So I guess there is an example of the type of question you're going to get here. Not so straightforward. You kind of got to use all the little things that we've learned this chapter so far and things really, frankly, you've learned last year um, as well, kind of putting them all together. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, I, I guess I'll just wrap up the lesson here. I'll just direct you to the last page, the in summary here. So you can use the sine law, the cosine law, primary trig ratios, sum of angles in a triangle, um, Pythagoras theorem even if it comes to it with the right triangle, to solve many problems that include acute triangles. So decide to decide whether you need to use the sine law or cosine law, you could consider this information. So this chart might be something that you can look at um, if you're given uh, this right here, a side, a side, and then an angle. You could use the sine law because you've got a side angle pair and you could you know, find this side over here, or th sorry, this angle. Um, if you're given this situation, you can use the sine law as well. Um, side angle side and side 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 or cosine law. So that's just a summary of uh, that, which might help you. You might want to refer back to that. Questions? And of course, the last point: drawing a clearly labeled diagram makes it easier to select a strategy. So again, I want to encourage you to draw a diagram. Okay, I'll give you your homework assignment here.